Here's a quick explanation about how to work velocity and displacement problems. Problem A on page 44 is an example. And you're going to be doing the problems on page 47. I want you to use this format, please. That's the important thing that you're learning right now. It's not so much that you're learning to get a correct answer. You're learning a thought process that will help you out when you see a problem that you're confused on and you don't really know where to start. First of all, let's look at the definitions of distance and displacement. If someone were going to walk through a town, and you're going to start at point A, and you're going to get to point B, you have a couple of ways you could do this. First of all, you could walk a couple of blocks one direction, and then a couple of blocks another direction, and then you could back up to run an errand somewhere, and you could walk a few blocks that way. Then you could, could walk a little closer to your destination, but then realize you wanted to go down this direction to get a coffee. And then you could backtrack around that block a ways, and you could make a couple more stops before you finally end up at your destination. So here's one way you could get there. This is distance. Okay, if you were going for a run, you would count all of that distance as how far you actually ran. Now, displacement is something totally different. It's just the exact straight line distance from one point to another. So if you were looking at someone's displacement, you would start here at A, and even though they went a bunch of different directions, they would have gone in a straight line to point B. So this, then, is displacement. Some people like to look at that as, as the crow flies. So how are you going to use this in problem solving? Well, when you do velocity, okay, and you're working a problem, which we're going to learn to work the problems today and talk about velocity a little bit in class next week, when you work a problem in physics, there's a format that you want to follow. I'm going to show you that format, and it will give you the advantage of um, having a starting point even when you're confused with something. So the first thing we want to do in this problem is we want to read it. So during a race on level ground, Andro runs with an average velocity of 6.02 meters per second to the east. What is Andro's displacement? So we want that straight line after 137 seconds. So this is what you're going to think. You're going to think, what am I given? And what am I looking for? So you're going to go up into your problem and you're going to say, well, I know that the velocity is 6.02 meters per second, and I know that the unknown and I know that I and I know 137 seconds is going to be some time, the unknown is going to be displacement. So you'd list these things. You would list what am I looking for? I'm looking for displacement equals, I don't know. And here's what I do know. I do know that velocity, 6.02 meters over seconds. And note that I'm writing the meters over seconds completely vertically. If you write it with a slash, it's much harder to see how you'll cancel units in the end. So please try not to do that. Okay. So we're looking for her displacement. We also know her time. And notice that we're always writing unit with everything that we do. The next thing we want to do is we think, what equation will I use? OK, so you'll think, what equation will I use? And your equation, then, is going to be the one that is given. Now, you'll get an, uh, to make a, a little cheat sheet of equations to use. I don't expect you to memorize them, but I expect you to be able to use them correctly. So that may be kind of what you want to do your work with. So our, our equation here is going to be the average velocity equation, which is the average equals the change in x over the change in time, okay? 
Sometimes we use x, sometimes we use another variable. It doesn't matter if you use p's and q's and whatever, as long as you define them here. So you're going to say what's going to equal what, and then when you see your equation, it's way easier. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to rearrange this equation to solve for the unknown. And here, our unknown is going to be the delta x. So we want to rearrange this equation so that we have that. So to do that, You'll use your basic Algebra 1 skills, and you'll say the av equals delta x over delta t. We're looking for the delta x, so you're going to multiply both sides by delta t. And when you then cancel those out, the delta t's, you'll find that the equation that you want to use <coughs> is actually <coughs> delta t times average velocity, and that's going to equal delta x. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to plug the math into this equation. And you want to be sure that you use units. Units are your friend. They will tell you if you've made a mistake, because if you get done and they don't cancel, you've obviously got to go back and rethink something that you did in your equation rearrangement. So our time from our list of givens, which we conveniently chose already. So we're going to write 137 seconds, and we're going to multiply that by our velocity, which is 6.02 meters over seconds. And the reason you did that is so you can conveniently see that the seconds will cancel. You're left in units of meters, which is exactly what you want for a displacement. Okay? And then, now that you've done this, you can do the math. And the math is going to look like 137 times 6.02, which is going to give you 824. 0.74 meters. Now, in looking at significant figures here, we see that we have three in one of our, our givens, and we have three in another. That means we can only have three in our answer. So we will use just those significant figures, those figures, and we'll round this up, the seven up. So we have 825 meters as our answer. Okay. So I'll post this um, set of notes for you as well, and this is how you will work all of your problems in practice A on page 44.